Good morning, everybody, and a warm welcome from the Düsseldorf Boat Show uh, in a cold and freezing Germany. I'm super happy to have uh, Sergey from Dynamic Yachts with me today this morning. And we are going to talk about our new uh, cooperation with Dynamic Yachts. I say new cooperation, but a little bit is like a renewal cooperation because we've been working together exactly. before. <laughs> exactly. It was an absolute pleasure. And uh, we, are, we talk about a little bit about our, um, let's say, brand ambassador role with uh, Dynamic and also about the new super exciting Explorer G400 from Dynamic Yachts. And uh, let's roll and see what uh, Sergey can say. Thanks for introduction. So, Sergey, um, please tell us about the USPs of Dynamic Yachts. I mean, we know about it, and quite a few of our clients know about it. But uh, it would be great to hear from the CEO and owner of Dynamic Yachts to know about the fantastic brand you're representing. Well, uh, I'd like to be really precise on that. Uh, every shipyard, obviously, can tell plenty of words about how good they are, uh, but. Uh, as far as dynamic is concerned, I think there are two important points which really uh, make a difference. Uh, as a shipyard, first we are concentrating on the technical excellence. We are really focused on the refined naval architecture. And our naval architecture is coming from the, like, the most important minds in uh, the modern your design and architecture. We are working mainly with the Dutch-based studios, such as uh, Azure, Van Asanen, and Repak. This is number one. Number two is a maker's list. That's super important because, uh, well, we can discuss lots and lots of things, but uh, once you have uh, a nice, uh, very, very high quality maker's list, that's already like 50% of success. Number three, uh, which is really important, is that we're trying to combine it with uh, attractive prices. Like it's uh, super easy to build something uh, very expensive, but we're try uh, trying to do it, I would say affordable, especially for the uh, level of makers list and uh, specification we're proposing. That's why we're all the time searching the ways how to optimize price. That's important, I think. And then to finish, uh, I'd like to say that we're a really international team. Uh, even having facility now in Turkey, we're not just another Turkish yard. Uh, we have now more than 14 nationalities uh, at the yard with different mindsets, which I think is strengthening a lot the brand and the product. As you can't, uh, you know, compete uh, globally, but uh, source guys from the local villages. Mm. So that's the idea behind it, in brief. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing setup for sure. I mean, uh, um, for us as well. I mean, because we've been working together, uh, you know, and we know each other. I think for like what, maybe twenty years now. Okay, Lucas, now please, uh, can you explain what to your mind sets Ocean Independence apart from the other brokerage houses? Yeah, it's, it's a bit, maybe a bit like your company as well. I mean, we are a global player. We are worldwide, you know, we've got 15 offices worldwide. We are over 100 people working for Ocean Independence. But like you, it's actually a family-operated uh, company. Yeah? So behind it is a family from Switzerland. You know, we are, let's say, very family-orientated, and what we do have is very local insights. So like you and Antalya, we do have like say 100 people, but we we are like locally based in very good areas, specific areas, with local people. Like say like, especially in Germany, like look at the German market. You know, which we are obviously with your brand trying to to push a little bit harder. We are uh, like located in Hamburg, in Düsseldorf, in Konstanz, which kind of like, you know, covers all the uh, German speaking area. And um, and then with Ocean, like uh, um, we have a wide range of experience. So we, we, we supervising bids, you know, we have the, the management in-house. 
we have basically everything in house, you know, f from finance to uh, law advice to uh, yacht management, everything is uh, in our, yeah, let's say in our border. So we have super fast response. We have highly qualified people and we've been around for many, many, many years, you know. So we are, uh, yeah, we, 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 be, we have a very similarity between the two. Yeah, cool, yeah. cool. <laughs> Um, and I mean, when I mean, you know, you know, in the market, you know, there are few explorers around, Sergey. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But um, what was your idea, let's say, behind the G400, which personally I think is like completely a new approach as well? Yeah? But what was the idea behind, like, the ideas of exactly that platform you build it or you're building? We were thinking quite a while before entering the explorer uh, market, and. Uh as always, uh, we were trying to look at into first different uh, technical components which can really prove that Dynamic Explorer is uh, something you'd like to have, something which is doing the job. Say, when we were sitting with the team, we defined 27 points which are setting us apart, but. <laughs> Uh, for the sake of saving time, I can uh, just talk about probably half of them. Uh, the most obvious one, which you can see from the very beginning, is offshore tested inverted bow, which is still not uh, the mainstream for the industry. And I'm just wondering why. Because when you look at the offshore commercial fleet operating in the heavy sea conditions, the inverted bow is the way to go. And it's not just uh, for the uh, supply vessels, uh, it also works for military vessels, it works uh, for the fishing vessels. So the first thing, uh, which is a typical uh, bow for dynamic, is the inverted bow I would like to use. So it helps to overcome all the heavy seas uh, in a nice and comfortable way. That's number one. Number two, which is rare for our series, we decided to use reinforced uh, steel hull mm -hmm. just to bring more comfort and more confidence to people. Uh, we don't know, we can do the same job with aluminium, but uh, looking at the market and what really people uh, want, say we proposed uh, this particular yacht with the steel hull. Mm -hmm let them feel better. <laughs> Second, we paid uh, a big accent on the large volume, say for the expeditions, for the trips to remote areas, sometimes uh, not a really good weather. You'd like to have different uh, places on board uh, where you can enjoy these long trips. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, plenty of space and for a 40 meter, we think uh, that uh, this is uh, one of the best proposals on the market today. Uh, we have five cabins uh, with one very large master on the main deck, but also another VAP cabin on the lower deck, which we know from experience many families are using. Mm. Sometimes you'd like to put your parents there or your best friends or your business partner. So it's, it's nice to have two masters, I would say. Uh, another thing uh, which is very important is a just oversized galley. Again, where you can spend time not just to grab a sandwich, but uh, many people nowadays, they like to cook themselves. And in all this, uh, you know, long passages, that's a kind of entertainment you want to have. And storage as well, eh? like, yeah, especially the galley storage well, when you're like in remote places. Eh? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, storage is in the galley. This yeah. is what you can see. Mm. What you cannot see are the storages <laughs> uh, yeah, below the main deck, uh, in the mm. technical areas mm. where you have uh, much more, let's say, fridges, but also storages for the technical parts, because this is basically what's distinguishing the Explorer vessels from the others. Mm. If you have lack of parts, so it's not that far you can go, even if you have big tanks. Uh, You've got spa facilities, uh, you've got sauna, uh, so all, all that, but uh, these are the key things. Mm. High volume, uh, like lots of storages and very strong hull. And don't forget, it's a cool looking machine. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, it's a very sexy looking explorer. If, may I say that? <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> uh, th th thanks for that. That's a, again another distinguishing factor from mm, dynamic. Yeah. Try to imagine we've got a client together. Uh, so can you tell what exactly you'll be doing mm. once we start a project at Dynamic and uh, till the successful delivery and start of uh, operations? Yes, for sure. I mean, we basically, um, we, people say that we start while we're building it, but we, we start far earlier. We literally start advising or helping the client to, uh, to come to your yard, you know, to visit your, the shipyard, to meet the people behind it, which is super important because we, it's going to be like a relationship you know, for, why exactly they need for to many years. There. Exactly. Yeah. So they have to come and see how you operate. So we literally facilitate all of that. And then also, um, from the beginning, we trying to set everybody together. So you know, there are so many little things like you need to consider. You need to get a, you know some law advice, you know, from a maritime specialist. You know, you need a project management, you know, uh, exterior project management, you know, to help you set up this stuff. And basically, like I said before, with Ocean Independence, we have this complete yacht management in-house uh, team. So we help you, um, or we help the client to. Um, to uh, finalize the specification, yeah, you know, because you guys are, you know, we, you guys, are custom guys, you know, we can, we can bring with your ideas. You come to you, and you and know, that's we, the whole point exactly. to come into the shipyard like us to do it exactly as you want. Exactly. So we have obviously because the clients have many ideas, but you need to put it on paper. So we let's say mediate between the client and the yard, you know, to make it a super smooth operation. We help you with financial advice. We help you with crew advice. You know, we help you with insurance. Uh, so all the stuff which, I'd say, is not the most fun part, but we take care of that so so the client can totally focus of enjoying the building process with Dynamic, mm -hmm. enjoying choosing the materials. You know, coming to the yard, and uh, I mean for us it's super important. You know that that the, the guys really wanted to to see and visit you. You know, like uh, during the build process. So. We take care of all, let's say, um, the must-be stuff, and and also advise them all the way, and then uh, and then enjoy the experience of building a boat with you, basically. Yeah. I completely agree with you, and I think the crucial part is advising. Mm -hmm. What I found out, because well, I'm building boats uh, for the clients, but also at our own shipyards, uh, basically from 2001, and uh, the biggest problem. I was facing is that client expectations sometimes are not met or the, per the perceptions they had mm. were not explained to them that you know, each yard has limitations, each spec has limitations, each platform has limitations. So if you're aware of that from the very beginning, that's fine. If nobody explained it to you, that creates unnecessary uh, problems. And I think the knowledge of a broker and the experience of a broker is to explain exactly uh, what to expect. And then when the yard is overcoming these expectations, mm -hmm. then everybody is completely happy. And that's super important. That requires lots of knowledge and lots of experience. No, I absolutely totally agree. And that's why, as why, like well, me personally, you know, and, and independence we have like naval architects you know as broker or me like a shipbuilding engineer you know as brokers to advise the guys uh, in the correct way yeah. second I mean with you obviously we are focusing a little bit on the Explorer uh, G400 but I mean dynamic is much more than just the G400 you know so maybe you can give us a little just a short overview of the other ranges or the other platforms you're also building? Yeah. Uh, with pleasure, Lucas. Uh, we have two main lines, uh, but before uh, explaining uh, the purpose of each of them, I would like to uh, distinguish uh, the fundamental things uh, which are working basically for each of these lines of the range. So all the boats we're building, we're building them to commercial class. Now it is BV, and in uh, many cases uh, they are comfort class compliance and green class compliance. Uh, 
In 100% of cases, uh, the yachts uh, are compliant with REG standards, and basically we build them for red and sand uh, flag uh, norms and regulations. Surely you can select uh, whatever other flag, uh, but uh, uh, REG and red and sand group at the moment uh, are setting the strongest and probably highest standard of yacht operation. So the criteria we have are working perfectly for all the other flags. So all yachts we are building are ocean going and all of them, they have unlimited range. And then we're coming to two lines we've got. Uh, so the first line is GTT, Gran Turismo Transatlantic. This is something for people who are looking for either mad or Bahamas friendly yacht. So with the accent of the exteriors, with plenty of decks, light boats, build of aluminium, fast boats, all of them are doing up to or can do, depending on the engines you select, they can do up to 24 knots. Important that you're cruising in fully displacement mode. Mm. So because all the hulls we built uh, are round bilge displacement hulls. So that's, that's a big distinguishing factor uh, from our side. And the GTT is basically what people like in the beginning thought about the dynamic. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. The, yeah exactly. Ba basically what we see behind us uh, is one of these models. Huh? Yeah, so uh, this is the model, uh, by the way, that's a 50 meter, uh, which is now under construction in Antalya. Uh, by the way, for a German family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's basically what people are thinking about dynamic. Mm -hmm. We used to say dynamic, meaning that we build dynamic yachts for dynamic people with high IQ. That's why we have it at the end. So IQ is not disappearing depending on the series. Uh, but yes, uh, GTT can go fast. Uh, the whole idea about that is uh, during your summer vacation, if you want to go uh, places, you can start, let's say, the season in Turkey. Uh, then uh, visit Greek islands, uh, then uh, let's say go to Croatia, to Venice, then you can cruise to Sardinia, uh, to Monaco and then end up in Ibiza. So for that you just need speed, otherwise you'll be like traveling, uh, yeah. And range. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and range. Yeah. So that's why all the yachts, they have range, but mm -hmm. you have range for what? Not to spend time at the fuel stations. So like this boat has a range of uh, 5,000 nautical miles uh, at 10 knots and okay, that's basically your whole summer season. So you, you need to go refuel maybe, maybe once or maybe not, but then it gives you the possibility to have perfect two season yacht when after having the season in the mat you go to Bahamas or you want to go to the Middle East, and then uh, it's also the Maldives uh, friendly yacht. And on your own keel, you don't have to. Exactly, you know. exactly. So that that's uh, the whole beauty of that. So this is GTT line, and we've got three boats uh, in this range. So we can start with 35 meters, uh, 115. Then we've got uh, 135, 41 meters, and uh, then 165. The other series is global, and this is completely different in terms of proportion between the exterior and the interior volumes. So there are much more interiors on that boat. So the much more storages, much more small places on board where you can sit alone, uh, where you can work, where you can just sit with a couple of your friends because it's so important to have different places to enjoy during the long passages. And that's all about global. And of course, all the systems, uh, all the like, even heated decks or all that are dedicated for the long passengers. So that, that's the distinguishing factor between two series. But, you know, realistically, if you ask me what's the most popular car in Monaco, I would tell you maybe G-Class. Hmm. Uh, saying that nobody's going to, let's say, to the mountains or somewhere else. That's just a part of the image. So to say, there is nothing wrong if you select Global 400 and then you start cruising just in the mat, mm. that's your choice. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, everybody has their own choice. And uh, like we have said, like we are looking at the G400 and I think it's also like a perfect boat for the Mediterranean. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yacht. totally agree, totally agree. 
We've got huge sun deck, which is like, okay, almost uh, close to 20 meters, five zones. So yeah, that's, that's a great mad boat. Hmm. And Sergei, I mean, we, we talked about it a little bit in the beginning, but I mean, uh, um, because you've been you know, be building boats, I think, for yeah, many, many years, decades, basically, what, what do you think is the advantage or what, what do you think is super interesting of building in Turkey now for you? Well, as we discussed earlier, right price is very important for us. You can clearly understand that all the yards in the world, so nobody's building their own engines uh, or generators uh, or whatever. So. I'd like to consider it well like chefs. We're taking the same ingredients, uh, but the proportions uh, and the way we put them together are different. Say, it's super important to understand what are your running costs, what are your fixed costs, because this is something which just directly influences the price. And our idea behind Dynamic is to give the latest, greatest, top-notch technology and highest spec but for attractive price. Not just saying, okay, we're cheaper, and then uh, the owner's rep is looking at the spec and, and he's you have cheap yeah. components. And, <laughs> and I know why. Uh, no, it's uh, about giving the best, but for affordable price. And uh, I was looking for almost two years uh, where we can find this place. And uh, we found Antalya uh, for the several reasons. First of all, uh, it's a uh, free zone, so we're not uh, paying taxes. Mm. And even in comparison with the northern cluster, shipbuilding cluster in uh, Turkey, uh, we are way uh, more attractive just because of that. Second thing is that uh, there are plenty of qualified workforce there. It's a small group of shipyards in Antalya free zone, uh, but Daman, Alia, Aris, just to name just a few, uh, they have very strong teams and subcontractors for already like more than 10 years. So that's very important that you can take uh, really good guys for paint uh, or uh, for some specific works and they're available on site. Mm -hmm. Meantime, uh, I'd like to tell you that there is another thing also, not least important, we were building Via Regia area before and the population of Via Regia is about 150,000 people. The population of Antalya is 1.5 million people. So whatever you need, you can source it mm. almost immediately. Everything is available. You've got a line of competitors. You can find the right product at the right price and extremely fast. And it's a good location to get to as well. Eh? I mean, it's e very easy to reach, you know, so it's very important for us, for the clients as well. Yeah, so there are like tons of uh, flights coming from Germany first, mm. but not only, uh, from the whole Europe. Second, it's a great weather. And for us as shipbuilders, I mean, talking about great weather, I'm talking about uh, the uh, good conditions, let's say, uh, for filler works, for mm. painting, so you don't need to heat the facilities, you don't need to do plenty of stuff which you need to do if you're based in the Northern Europe, as an example. So that's really, really good. And yeah, you're right, it's so cool to come. It's uh, more than 300 sunny days in Antalya. Mm. I really enjoy it. Even in comparison with Monaco, it's just uh, super friendly. And I'll be happy to see you there for our second video, which we're going to have a dynamic facility. Fantastic, can't wait. It's going to be amazing and it's going to be probably a bit warmer than we have here in Dusseldorf right now. <laughs> uh, for sure, so stay tuned and uh, yeah, see you next time with Lucas. Thanks see lot, you soon, Lucas. thanks a lot.